Hi everyone, I'm Laura Noel and it's Pintober Day 3. It's Foodie Friday, so today we are going to make our own homemade cheese crackers. Today's pin is homemade Cheez-Its from Little House in the Suburbs. Now on this blog, The Little House in the Suburbs, it's actually a recipe for gluten-free Cheez-Its. Um, and her recipe calls for sorghum flour and coconut flour. Now, I am all for gluten-free, but I have not tried that recipe and I don't have sorghum flour in my house. So, uh, on another website, I believe it's the same person, but I'm not actually sure. Um, she quoted that instead of using those two gluten-free flours, you can use just one cup of plain white all-purpose flour. So that's what I'm going to be using today um, instead of those two, but the rest of the recipe is the same. This particular recipe, when you make one recipe, it makes, she says it makes about the equivalent of a small box of Cheez-Its. Now I have found that in my house that goes really, really quickly. Um, based on what kind of food processor you have, it'll depend on how big of a batch you can make. I currently have an 11 cup um, food processor and so I actually double her recipe and found that that is a good amount for us to eat in a couple of days. I used to have, um, when I first started I used just a mini four cup processor and I actually had to split the recipe into half and make half at a time and that worked for us too. So you have to figure out how big your food processor is and how much of a recipe you're going to make. So I'm going to tell you how much for one recipe, but I'm actually going to be making a double recipe myself. So first thing is if you're doing all-purpose flour, one cup of all-purpose flour, or as her recipe calls for, half a cup of sorghum flour and a fourth cup of coconut flour, whichever one you prefer. Then you're going to use four tablespoons, which is half a cup of cold unsalted butter. You're going to use half a teaspoon of salt. And she says half, um, half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. I don't like it with that much pepper, so for two recipes, for a double recipe, I use one fourth teaspoon. So however much pepper you want in there, you decide how much. And then you'll also use a couple tablespoons of cold water. I just use tap water. And finally, a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. You can use sharp, mild, I believe I use medium. Your first step is to take your flour and put it into the bottom of your food processor. Then take your butter, open it up on a cutting board or you can just do it in the wrapping. Grab a knife and just cut it into cubes, just smaller pieces and throw it on in. Click it into lock and pulse it a few times. Then you're going to add in your cheese. Your salt, and 
and your cayenne pepper. You can also leave the cayenne pepper out. I have done that before if you don't like any bit of spice in there. You're going to want to pulse it until it gets crumbly together. tablespoons you may not use that much you don't want to over sticky your dough so you just want to add a little bit of time and see how it goes I usually turn it on and just keep adding water rocking and rolling around inside it's usually done. Make sure that you wash your hands and have a clean cutting board surface available. You'll also want to get all of your baking pans out. You might want to sprinkle some flour. You can take some and either just hand pat it out or roll it with a rolling pin. If you're a perfectionist, you can try to do what she does here, make them all perfect squares with little dots in them, or you can do what I do, just roll it out, cut, slice, break, however you need to get them onto the pan. You'll also want to preheat your oven at 350 degrees. The recipe says to aim for about an eighth of an inch thick. You just don't want it too thin or too thick, or it'll mess up the baking time. Once you have them cut, you can just place them on a pan. Once your pan is full, you have the optional step of sprinkling a little bit of salt on top if you like that little extra saltedness. And they are ready to go into the oven. The recipe says to bake about 20-25 minutes. The recipe says to bake for 25 to 30 minutes. I personally found with my oven um, that about 18 to 20 minutes was a good mark, but you can also cook them a little, bake them a little bit less for a little bit softer feel and a little bit longer for more of a crunchy feel. So it's up to you. You kind of decide what works with your oven. So there they are, my very imperfect collection of homemade cheese crackers. I love these things. They are so good and 
perfect snack, definitely healthier than crackers that you get in the store. They of course don't taste just like Cheez-Its, uh, but they do taste like cheese crackers. So they're kind of a mix between a goldfish and a Cheez-It and they're cheese crackers and they're so good. <laughs> so thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. It's great. I have been using this for several months. My husband says he likes it better than the store-bought soap now. At first, I did notice that it kind of dried my hands out a little bit, but that was only because I was so used to using the store-bought soaps that had all the chemicals in them. Um, once I went to solely use this at home, no problems, and it definitely does have a moisturizing effect. So.